Mikkel, you're back in this building. You were here just a couple weeks ago and you got a big comeback win. What stands out to you going back to that game film that could be important for tonight? Yeah, uh, yeah, just playing hard. And, um, you know, the basketball is a game of runs. So just, you know, they're home. We got up 15 and, you know, we didn't quit. We just kept fighting. You know, there was a lot of game left and uh, stuck together. So it's just it's a big, big just together game right there. And um, I think it just helped us to where we're at right now. This Heat team has won now six in a row since that loss. Yep. Is there anything that you've seen from this that group in these last six games when you do do your scouting report against that group? Um, man, it's just it's just Coach Spo work, man. It's just you know, that's my guy too. Just I know after that, and it's just where he where he's gonna keep everybody accountable. I know everybody's gonna step up, and um, I think Bam, everybody else been playing really well, and uh, the rookie too uh, from UCLA, just a jock. Jacquez, I think, or something. Yeah, but he's been hooping. They all been playing really well. So um, I know Spell got them guys all all fired up. Um, but yeah, it's gonna, they're going to be locked in for sure tonight. How critical is it to have Nick Claxton back? Uh, you guys didn't have him that first matchup, but now you guys will have him tonight. Oh, I mean, amazing! Like he just generates so much as a threat, especially offensively. Just you know, him rolling to the rim, and he just—I don't think he understands how much. Because I think he's rolling, he doesn't see, but he brings so much commotion. Like gets Cam, gets everybody else wide open three. So just him being that roll threat and then him catching lobs and especially him defensively. I mean, that's nothing. I don't think I have to bring that up. You know how he is defensively. And um, it's great to have just one of our anchors back. Is having an anchor like that, a guy who can protect the rim like he does, make it easier for you guys to gamble? You know, Jacques talks a lot about, you know, getting turnovers and being more aggressive. And yeah. To make it easier to take those risks when you know you have him back there? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, any defense, you know, you when you know you got somebody like Clax protecting the rim, you could, you could be more liable, uh, being more aggressive and maybe get blown by because you know they have to, somebody at the rim. You know, if that's somebody down there, not a rim threat, then it's, then it's kind of difficult because, you, you know, they get a couple steps on you. They used to go finish at the rim. So it's great to have Clax back. He makes it easier on both ends for all of us and makes our team that much better. Does having him back kind of maybe help kind of get that transition game going a little bit without Ben, just for right now at least? Yeah, I think, yeah, and I think a lot of it is, um, you know, when we don't have Ben, and especially when Clax was out, you know, we had no rim threat. No, you know what I'm saying? Like Ben as a roller was good and, um, we, but at times we had five guys spacing, five guys that can shoot. You know, we had Doe and, and um, Royce out there and telling those guys to roll, like, yeah, maybe they'll mix it up, but that's not their first thing to do. They don't, they're not a big, they don't think roll. So having five out doesn't come to our advantage a lot, you know, unless we're cashing on a lot of threes, but that brings no rim threat. They can load up and just make us kick out. So having a real road threat like Clax back opens up so much. You know, you get in the paint, kick out, and that's why you generate more threes. So does it encouraging then maybe from the last game that you guys were able to get out so quickly and transition again without Ben? Is that encouraging going forward now that you guys can maybe try to keep that up while he recovers? For sure. I mean, just hold it down for him. Um, like I said, just you can't – if you haven't been out, you, having Clax makes it so much better. It's tough to have both of them out. And um, so when Ben's out, Clax comes back, it, it, it's, it's, it's good to, to have him to help us out in transition because, you know, Ben's like – ridiculous to transition I can't even explain it because I can't play that damn fast running out there finding people so it's just it's just in his DNA how he plays and it's just it's a real threat so happy to have Clax back to help with the screening part you know obviously Ben comes bring it up but Clax rolling running to the rim and screening is as when Ben has the ball. I know uh, you probably touched on it but just how much are you looking forward to Friday Villanova? Yeah I mean I'm excited man just all my family friends be there um, see my old coaches and stuff like that. Uh, it's gonna be a nice, it's gonna be a great time. Mikel, curious about just like the last little over a month that you guys have now played Miami and been here three times. What is just your thoughts on the schedule of having to go to Miami so early and so many times, and this being the last time? I think I've been complaining about it for two days straight now. Uh, I wish they just pushed a couple of these back in January or something, February when it's cold as, cold as hell at home. So, but of course they want to send us here in November. Um, but it's all right. But yeah, I wish it, I wish it was a little bit later.
looking ahead to Friday, I guess, like, what maybe stands out about that, that time in Villanova? I mean, you guys won the championships, but just what was it about that culture there that you that really you feel has helped you for being in the league now? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think just, just personally for Coach Wright just helped me turn into a man in college. I think that was the biggest thing I really take away from it. Um, you know, I grew up with my mom and being an only child and being really, really stubborn and, you know, getting whatever I want. Um, so that's what it really was. But then going to going to college and being around Coach Wright and him talking to me years and talking about, you know, relax on asking your, my mom for money all the time. Uh, you you know, you got this is a process of you growing up and being a man. And, you know, I didn't take that as no, like, oh, offensive. Like, I was like, yeah, like, I got you. Like, we get a little sniping. We get, like, 200 a month. And I'm like, oh, okay, we have that. We have our meal plan. Coaches take care of us. We're in the hotel all the time. They, they give us food. So I'm like, all right, like, that's a challenge for me. And, you know, I think it was kind of weird for my mom for a while because I was, wasn't was asking. And she was just like, are you good? I'm like, I'm great. So I think just I take away just becoming a man. And Coach Wright was, like, probably the biggest influence on that when I was in college. Thanks, you